why is this so messy? Hmm. Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. Come for the best productivity apps for the Mac and stay for the dual monitor setup. Diving right into one of my favorite Mac apps of late, Drop Zone 4. A feature I use every single day is dragging a file up to the Drop Zone grid that appears as you approach it and airdropping that file onto my iPhone or iPad. What's more, you can drag individual files and place them into the drop bar here. This acts like a holding bay for your files. Then you can combine them into a single file by doing this. Then you can drag and drop this entire package into a messaging app or any application that receives file transfers. And what really blew my mind is that you can combine different file types together. I have a PNG image file, PDF, and audio WAV file here. Of course, if you have multiple files in one place, you can drag and drop them all at once in the drop bar like so. If you want to remove them from the drop bar, hold down option and close them out like this. There is a paid version I might upgrade to just to support the developers, but for 90% of us, these free features are more than enough. The second Mac app I use every two minutes, Alt-Tab. I used to be a Windows PC user before being corrupted by the dark side of Apple, so I've always missed the ability to select specific windows as opposed to like the entire app, right? And this is obviously very useful if you have multiple Chrome uh, instances open, but you only wanna bring one of them to the front as opposed to every window. If you want to copy my settings, here are my appearance preferences. I've changed the default theme from Mac OS to Windows 10. Didn't really change anything down here, but under controls, you might want to take note of some of the changes here. For shortcut one, option tab allows me to toggle among all my windows across both of my screens. But for shortcut two, option tilde allows me to toggle only between windows for a specific active app. So if I have multiple Finder instances, I will only see Windows from Finder. Sounds like a small thing, super useful when you get used to it. Third Mac app that I think is extremely underrated, Monitor Control. This app allows you to control the brightness of your monitors, no matter how many you have, from a single drop-down menu. Under the app's preferences at menu, I love how you can show percentages and show the slider tick marks for like OCD level of accuracy. And although I don't have it in this monitor, if you have one with speakers, you can show the volume slider in the menu as well. This will be game-changing for those of us who regularly use external displays. We won't have to go into displays, display settings, just to change a brightness or rely on the shortcut on the keyboards that might not work for every monitor. Pro tip, if you have multiple displays with monitor control installed, you can hold down command control, adjust the brightness on your keyboard, and this changes the brightness across all your displays at once. Pro tip number two, I don't know why I was surprised, but if you connect your MacBook to a TV monitor, you can easily control the brightness of that display as well. Lastly, because this is open source, you wanna download this from the GitHub page and not the App Store. By the way, this video is part one where I share all the apps I use to increase my efficiency on the Mac. Next week, I share the best Mac apps I use for file and media management, so make sure to be subscribed for those. Best Mac app for productivity number four, Moom. This is the app that allows me to snap my windows to different pre-arranged positions on my displays. Under the app preferences, keyboard tab, you can see I trigger Moom by holding down uh, Control Shift Z, like so. And I also enable Show Cheat Sheet because sometimes I forget which shortcut does what. And you can set the different positions under the custom tab here. Now, there is a one-time cost for Moom. I think it's worth it but a free alternative is Rectangle. I think I've just stuck with Moom mainly because uh, they have the option to move windows between displays, and I'm not sure whether the free alternatives can do that. If you do end up using Moom, a pro tip I have for you is to define window sizes using at least six by six cells to give you more flexibility when creating these positions. Productivity app number five, Numi. As a product marketer working at a global company, I have to use different currencies for budgeting. So it's super convenient for me to type 50,000 US dollars to RMB 
click the output gets copied immediately and I can paste it directly to a spreadsheet that I'm working on. On a similar note, before I message my teammate in the UK, I can check the time in London like this. And I love working at my company, but we are very America centric. So I'm constantly switching between Imperial and metric and Numi handles all that like a champ. Mac productivity app number six, cheat sheet. As the name implies, if you hold down the shortcut command for a period of time, a cheat sheet for your active app appears. Then you can either learn the hotkey by pressing it, or if you're a lazy bum, you can simply click the action like so. The only pro tip for this one is you can access the settings gear down here to the bottom right, and I have the delay set to the one, two, three, fourth tick here. Next app, App Cleaner, super minimal, super useful. I think we all know you can uninstall any application on the Mac by dragging the application into the trash can and emptying it. But that method leaves behind a bunch of useless files that could take up your storage. So with App Cleaner, all you gotta do is drag and drop the app over. And not only does it allow you to remove the app itself, but you can now also review and choose to remove all the files and documents created by the app. And as someone who likes to be clean and tidy in real life, I love this. Pro tip, you can add App Cleaner to your dock and just simply drag and drop apps from, let's say, Launchpad onto the icon directly. Productivity Mac app number eight, CleanShot X. Now, this is paid. I have free alternatives for you, but none of those come close in terms of features and product updates. It seems like a normal screenshot tool at first, but after taking the screenshot, you can double click this floating window and start editing. You can draw different shapes, change to another color, make a circle like so, even add like some fancy ass arrows like this where you can change the curvature, make edits, move around or delete. You can annotate, obviously this is helpful. Uh, I love the blur feature here because it's like super natural blur and you can change the amount here. You can highlight a specific part of the screenshot and you can even add numbers if it's something like a how to. After all my edits, I can share to airdrop immediately, make a copy to my clipboard or upload to the cloud so I can hyperlink this screenshot in an email to my colleague who's somewhere else. And it doesn't stop there. This app gives you the option to take a screenshot of a window perfectly with the rounded edges and a transparent background. And you have full control over this in their preferences. It sounds like they're sponsoring me, they're not. I'm even using CleanShot X right now to record my screen for this video. The only bad thing I can say about them is that their support team uh, isn't exactly the friendliest, but at least they still got back to me. I even went on Reddit to try to find a free alternative for you guys, and the closest thing they got was something called a shotter. If you want a quick and dirty free solution, uh, you can go to your keyboard preferences, shortcuts, screenshots, and under copy picture of selected area to the keyboard, double click this key binding and change it to shift command S like I have here. This allows you to take a screenshot that doesn't get saved to your desktop. It gets copied to your clipboard and you can use it and or paste it rather immediately. App number nine, Alfred. I can literally do an entire video on this app. Let me know if that's what you want but let's just go over the highlights. First, it completely replaces Spotlight Search. After you install Alfred, go to your keyboard preferences again, go to Shortcuts, Spotlight, uncheck Spotlight Search uh, for a command space because that's what you're gonna use to bring up Alfred moving forward. Some of the basic features, you can now open any app you want, letting you keep the doc super clean, uh, press space and start typing the name of file or document you know the name of, so you don't have to go around digging in Finder, define any word you want, uh, lets you search Google directly, Amazon directly, YouTube directly, and allows you to run like system commands like uh, sleep, um, and empty trash, which I run like 10 times a day. All that is available in the free version, but as you can see, the settings look a little bit scary. So I'm just gonna go through these pages, feel free to pause the video, copy these preferences, and let me know in the comments if you want like a full tutorial. I recently upgraded to the paid version just to support the developers because I don't use 90% of the paid features but the two functions I do use are clipboard history and snippets. Starting with snippets, this is basically like text expander. So if someone asks me, hey Jeff, what videos of yours should I watch as a working professional? I just reply with YYTOTB and my YouTube playlist for Think Outside the Box 
populates here. Clipboard history is basically a clipboard management feature. I call it up by pressing command option C. Uh, super useful for me uh, to bring up something I copied uh, a minute or an hour ago, right? And paste it whenever I need to. I also copy a lot of pictures as you can see here, uh, mainly memes actually. And I love the preview on the right. So I know that I'm not sending the inappropriate ones to my boss by mistake at work. A free alternative to this paid outfit feature is something called Mackie. It's open source, so you can download it for free from the GitHub page. Um, and as you can see, after I bring it up, it's basically the exact same thing as Clipboard History. And I want to shout out to the YouTube channel created by Ella for introducing me to this free app. She also shares an amazing workflow tip whereby if you use the command shift S uh, shortcut we talked about earlier to take a screenshot, uh, you can access that screenshot immediately using Mackie. So, her workflow is free and CleanShot X and the Clipper History feature are paid. Rounding out Mac apps for productivity, number 10, Logi Options. This is a must install for me, mainly because I use Logitech products at home, hashtag not sponsored, and I mainly use this to change the front and back buttons to show desktop and mission control um, for my MX Master 3. Under point and scroll, I disable smart shift. I choose the ratchet wheel mode and I disable smooth scrolling as well. For the keyboard shortcuts, I leave it as is. All right, let me know if there's an app you'd like me to deep dive on. Make sure to come back next week for my video on the best Mac apps for file and media management. In the meantime, check out my video on the top productivity tips for the MacBook. See you there.